Hello and welcome to my first and probably last painting guide. This, this tutorial will allow you to paint your miniatures in a very Souls-like style. Within this tutorial I'm going to be painting Monstein and Smaug. I don't consider myself a master painter, I just uploaded a picture of one of my Dungeons & Dragons characters which was a suit of armour and I painted him to give him, I wanted him to look like he came from straight out of Dark Souls and a lot of people seem to be interested in this so I thought well okay I don't I don't normally see people paint metal in the way I do so why not make a tutorial so as you can see with uh, Arnstein and Smog, the the paint looks it's got like a texture to it and it's all natural shading to do with the base coat the way this technique works is um, it's all about dry brushing. They're gold, but I'm starting to paint them with an undercoat of silver. I did this for two reasons. One, to give it a sort of a real dull brass look to it rather than a shiny, vivid gold. Um, also, so you can see this being done with normal metal as well. So, the idea behind this is basically you get. You, you put the paint on your brush and then you, I spread it on, I've got a bit of A4 paper underneath me and uh, you can see there I'm basically spreading it on the A4 paper, I'm painting the A4 paper more than I'm painting the model. Just you do this so you can get the brush real dry and it's all, it almost feels like you're, it's like powder being applied to the model. Once you get the pressure right you can pretty much just splash him on and rub all over and almost have no care in the way you brush. So one of the things I mainly do is I, I hold the brush to the side, I go to, at the edges. So the black undercoat is your shading, so you need to make sure the black stays in the grooves and when you're dry brushing that you don't slip in there, otherwise it kind of ruins the effect. Once you sort of, once you're going it's actually pretty easy to avoid this. Um, with really bumpy surfaces I leave the under surface almost pretty much black. The idea behind what I was trying to do is it's almost like you're painting where you think light is going to reflect because metal is basically just reflections and shiny surfaces so you just got to you try and imagine it from the point of view is that you're not trying to paint the whole model as if it's completely absent of dramatic lighting. Um, I'm quite a fan of the uh, lighting effects people do on models. So here you can see this is the finished silver part. Dry brushing is the key. So now I'm going to start with the gold. Now when I do the gold I am much more careful with the dry brushing. Especially the, the sort of the primary parts like the head. I'm making sure that I'm getting the shine of the gold in exactly the right places. So you've got to imagine the lighting in the scene and try and paint towards that really. I always do this as if the light is pointing directly down and then paint towards that so everything that's lower stays dark. The thing with uh, metal is I often see people who are learning to paint, they cover the whole model in the base coat of the silver and then they rely on the wash to give it the shading, which when you're quite a talented painter is a, is a great method um, and can achieve great results. But most of the time you often hear the critique, thin your paints and things like that. So if you're someone that struggles with that and can't seem to get metal that has a real edge to it, um, this method might help you. Um, this method isn't for everybody. Um, I often hear arguments against dry brushing. Um, dry brushing is just a technique I like to do a lot, um, even in sort of natural painting, skin and everything. I often dry brush as well. But with metal, it really stands out. So as you're dry brushing it, it the texture, the texture just comes onto the onto the surface by itself. Like you don't even have to, you don't even have to create that. You just you just brush away, and the texture just is there. This is a sort of a, a bit of a, a boring model because um, he's all just one color. 
So that's the complete model. You almost place them down and say that's it, it's finished now. But uh, I always go a bit a step further to really bring out the uh, the shine. And so, even though I'm using the black as the shading, I still I get uh, with this one I got crimson wash, and I splash it all over. I don't hold back. I just get it in and push it right in. And this gives it a little bit more emphasis, and it almost sort of blends the colour a bit. And it just it just adds a natural more texture to what you've already got. When I first used to do this I didn't even know shades existed. I didn't even understand the concept of washing. Which is probably why this I've developed this technique, because it works for me without you could do it you can do it without the shading. But then when I discovered shading it just it just added that next level of detail to the painting. So I see how he's now become more, the metal has become more dull now. So the next step is the edge highlighting. So I sometimes I use, if it's silver, skull white. But in this case I'm using a different colour of gold, which I think is Arik Armour Gold, which is a brighter gold, and using that to edge highlight. With this model I didn't do too much edge highlighting because I really it really wanted to have that dull look to it. With this model particularly, I painted some of the areas with the shinier gold where the light shines right down on the metal. Um, even though it's dull, you still need to it still has the reflections. So this is the finished model. Um, I'm going to show you a couple more examples of where I've used this technique elsewhere. So this is a model I'm still painting at the moment. But this one I've really used the skull white as the edge shadows to really bring it out and give it a bit of character. And these are a set of models I've been painting for Gore Chosen. To get this sort of effect I tend to just dry brush the edges outwards until I'm happy with the effect and it gives that sort of gradient effect that you can see on this axe. So I hope this has helped. Uh, maybe it might be a technique you want to use, maybe a technique you want to develop and change. Uh, give me your opinions, uh, show me any of your work as well, that would be great. I'd love to see uh, I'd love to see people who have tried my technique and enjoy it and see the results. And thank you again.